I want to thank our co-sponsors, Veterans of Peace. And also the uh, Women's March Maine. The next incredible person that's coming on this stage. I love her so much already. I just talked with her the first time yesterday in person and met her this morning. Her name is Fatima Hussein. She's here from Lewiston. She is the incredible mother, activist, and co-founder or founder of the United Somali Women of Maine. Please welcome her. Hello. We're so colorful that you can't believe this. <laughs> um, my name is Fatima Hussein. I am the director and founder of the Immigrant Resource Center, formerly known as the United Somali Women. I'm also the mother of eight children. I'm growing the population of Maine, right? And I'll tell you, they're very smart kids. You know, Georgetown and Swarthmore College, you can be that. I am an immigrant. I am a woman. I am a sister, I am a daughter, I am a woman of color, and no, I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> Neither am I the basis for fear. You know, they create a lot of fear out of nothing. That fear is designed to divide us. That fear is designed to target and attack people who are marginalized. That fear is designed to focus on being defensive all the time rather than really looking at the progress we've made so far. You know, they think that America is for people with white skin. They think that America is for people who don't wear hijabs. They think that America is for people who don't speak English. Let me tell you something about those people. You know, people who look like me are the most resilient and courageous people you can ever meet. Woo! I, I, I have to be a proud Somali. You know, if it wasn't for the Africans and Somalis who have been coming to the state of Maine, you wouldn't have colorful people. And yes, we are hardworking, smart, mostly women and children who have never stepped in a classroom. Yet, when we go through war, lose everything, pick up the pieces as if everything is normal, we have the faith and the courage to move on. And we move on, we walk for miles and miles and miles with no water, no food, no medicine. We get raped and killed. We get des destroyed. Our whole world is destroyed. And we land in a place like the state of Maine. We come here having the faith in people like you that we are going to have a new day and that we're going to have a second chance in life. Yeah. <laughs> That spirit, I'm sorry to say, that spirit and that resilience and that determination will not be destroyed by bigots and racist people. I'm like, if I went through war and came out of that one piece, who are you, Donald Trump, to tell me something otherwise, you know? 
for you, Governor LePage, to tell me that I have no right to be in the state of Maine. <laughs> Maine is a good place. It's a great place to live. It's a good place because someone like me got a chance. I got resettled as a refugee in 1993 in Atlanta, Georgia. And when I heard about Maine in early 2000, on a very winter day, I arrived in Maine February 4th of 2001. When I came to Maine, I had the utmost respect for Mainers because I couldn't smell racism in the air versus where I came from, which was South. I came from a place where everything was based on your skin color. And for me, I did not understand what that was. So I came to Maine, and even if people had different opinions about you, they kept it to themselves, and I appreciated that. And because of that, I found my right footing. And here I am today with you. Thank you. I, I stand in front of you speaking for many mothers who don't have voices. You see, people who come from, you know, isolated communities, underserved communities, marginalized communities, they're often in the shadows. Their voices are not heard. They don't come to places like this. They struggle a lot. They don't have access to services. They try to make the best they can to provide a good foundation for their children. We cannot threaten that. We as Mainers have to rise above that and have to say all communities count. And that when all of our communities work together, young, old, women, men, children, everybody, when we work together, and we become the voice for people who don't have voices, then we thrive. I want to bring us back to this idea of fear and division and how they become loud and how we then go into action to be defensive. It's important for us to really recognize our progress. It's important for us to celebrate our goodness it's important for us to focus on the good things and not having all of this crazy stuff that comes on television and radio every day that we have to keep fighting them all the time. No, I reject that. We need to resist. We, 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 we need to bring our positive stories out. We need to celebrate our communities while well, we also recognize that there's a lot of work to be done. We need to really speak up. We can't be the silent majority. We can't be those people who, you know, I, I look at Lewiston, right? When I came to Lewiston, you know, city of Lewiston, downtown Lewiston looked like a ghost town. Lisbon Street did not have colorful people like what they have today. I may get in trouble for that, but let me tell you this. We have made that city yes. thrive. Yes. We have made the state of Maine very colorful. You know, we have, we have provided so many opportunities around developing the economy, making our schools better and smart schools that are performing much better, you know, making our you know, um, uh, workforce development, having young people, because a lot of us are very young. A lot of us are very young who need to work, who work so hard, who believe in Mainers, who believe in America, because you took good care of us. And so it's time for us to give back. And that has to be recognized. So in, in, in closing, I, I, I tell, a lot of times I tell people what to do. Um, and I, I, you know, I apologize if I'm going to, you know, offend someone, but this is what we need to do. 
We need to recognize that the state of Maine needs all of us. Do, you know, in, in spite of what your cultural, religious, gender, uh, whatever you you know you 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 define yourself to be, we need all of us to be on the same page. We need we need to take our state back. We need to run for office. We need to stand up for the voiceless. When you go to Hannaford's and there's someone of color or someone from an underserved community that's being attacked, it's your responsibility, you and I, to speak up. You, you can't turn, you cannot turn a deaf ear or a blind eye. That's not how progress is achieved. When you're in schools and kids are being bullied, you need to stand up. When you're at the hospital or the Department of Health and Human Services, give, God give them blessings, you need to stand up. We all have biases in ourselves. We need to dig deeper and say, what is my, what is my uncomfortability? What am I uncomfortable with? And you need to stand up and say, you know what, I am racist. You know what, I am bigot, but today, what I say is, we all count. All of our voices count. We need to really look at your neighbor, knock on their door, look who's in their community, look at your schools, look at the friends of your children, and make sure that every community has a voice. Make sure that every community counts, because I am tired of trying to say, to, to try to prove myself how much more do I have to do? I have eight children. I have grown the population of the state of Maine. My daughter goes to Georgetown and my other daughter goes to Swarthmore. What else can I do? I, I employ, I don't know, 11, 12 people. We provide the economy of the state of Maine. What else do I need to do to prove who I am? What else do I need to prove that Muslim women are not and communities from the the Muslim community are not terrorists. We don't have terrorism in us. We, we are just like you. Like what, every morning we wanna get up and go to work, go to school, and we're just simple people who need peace. <laughs> Nobody deserves to live in fear. Nobody deserves to live in, to live in, you know, you wake up every morning. You know, we had a community conversation some time back and there was this woman in the audience who asked my coworker, tell me who is ISIS? I can't answer that question. I can't, neither can my coworker answer that question. It drains me a lot in my work every day when we have to talk at you and everybody and say, here we are, this is who we are. I don't mind education, I do that. I don't mind bridging communities, I do that. I don't mind building bridges, I do that. But I think we all have a responsibility to say, what do we need to do to build communities? to build bridges and to accept and tolerate all of us because that is what overcomes fear. That's what keeps the bigots quiet and that's what progress all of us to be a healthy, equitable, tolerant Maine. Thank you so much. Bless you.